So what, you're just gonna put your iPod on shuffle? Thank you, baby. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Making bang. Bitch, I'm an iPod. I am the greatest. I am the king of 2K and I keep making bang. Making bang. Every single song you own is a banger. Yeah, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. I want to welcome you guys to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys all about my NBA 2K24 build simply because it's about that time, man. We all know that 2K has come out every single year. And now that I have the min and max of the heights for the builds that are out, it's time for me to go ahead and show you guys what I want to cook up in the first season of 2K24. Let's go ahead and hop into the video. For the people that's new to my channel, I wanted to let you guys know that I created three total builds for NBA 2K23. The first season build that I created was a 6'7 slash and small forward. It was an amazing build, had a 99 driving dunk. Everything that you've seen as far as slashing goes, that build could do it, as well as it had an 85-3, and it could also play a little bit of ISO, but it wasn't as quick with the first step as my season two meta build, which was my 6'9 point guard that could do it all. Literally, I didn't have to make another build up until season, I think the end of season seven. And that build happened to be a diming big man. So that means that I was able to grab boards, throw outlet passes, all that I wanted to. It was an inside big, which means it had no shooting to it. It was a great rep grinding build to level 40, but I really didn't use it that much up until season eight going into nine. Now, I want to show you guys what my first build for 2K24 is going to be, and I'm doing a complete 180. This is something that I've never done in all of the 2Ks that I've ever played. I've never created a lock first. All right, so this year I'm coming into 2K24. I'm talking about park, rec, uh, if they're going to still be calling it the theater, whatever the online modes is. I'm gonna be creating a lockdown for that. Now, as far as my no money spent my career series, I'll be letting you guys know what build that is, day one. So let's go ahead and hop into it. <sighs> I hope y'all don't kill me in the comments. Kill me in the comments. You guys already know, the name is gonna be David Ipod King Carter to start things off. The position will be a small forward. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh, if you're creating a lock, why don't you go shooting guard? Why don't you go point guard so you can go toe to toe with the best guards in the game when you playing them the reason why is because we can always switch ball if i can be a small forward and i can move down and guard point or guard the shooting guard you know whomever is going off crazy and somebody can hold my guy i can i can work that out now the reason why i also went small forward is simply because we don't play the game the right way anymore i'm gonna tell you why in NBA 2K23, my homie Juba created like a hash sitting build, right? With a ton of playmaking. And whenever my homie New York Minute came in to run guard, New York Minute was always at shooting guard because his playmaking wasn't as high as Juba's. As well as I was on a 6'9 build, which means I'm a point guard build. I get moved down a small forward and then our actual shooting guard, the person that we actually like grab to just, you know, come and play with us, you know, whether it be a six, seven or six, eight build, they were down at power forward. And I'm talking about, they were down at power forward with no rebounding. I'm talking about, this was like a build that was like meant to send a quarter, you know, just play a couple games. They just came to ball. They didn't really come to compete. They just came to ball and our center, which was whether it was a seven, one, a seven foot, a swing, like, that's what it was. It was messing up everything. So I've decided that I'm going to be the guinea pig to not make a point guard, not mess up the flow of things and make sure that New York has his spot. Now, for the rest of Cell Squad, whoo, I don't know what they're going to do, but I know that Raunchy loves playing big and point guard. Big only if he has post moves. Guard because he's the best guard that we have. Um, Chase... He always kind of like moves to the big. I've been trying to get him on the center to just throw R1, L1s all day. He doesn't want to do it, so he always defies me somehow. Trey, Trey loves to play shooting guard, like, the you know, the second man up, and he also likes to play big. I think Trey is better on big than he is on guard, but that's just me. Ken, Ken, he can play whatever. He can play small forward. He can play power forward. He don't really like to play shooting guard and, and, and point guard anymore simply because he can't catch bodies the way he wants to when he's on the taller builds. 
Now, Ricky, Ricky has always made a hash hitter all the time. Now, I'm not sure if that hash hitter would be a shooting guard. I'm not sure, sure if the hash hitter would be a small forward, but I know it gives us options in that two, three range that, you know, a couple people can alternate and stuff like that. But I know for sure, Raunchy, you're on guard. I'm sorry, Trey. I might have you move to big and make Chase make a guard. Chase, you ain't going to run for them this guard. But I know I'm chatting right now. Let's go ahead and get back into the build. Now, right-handedness, of course. Jersey number 87, of course. Now, body settings. I went with a 6'7 build. All right? I know a lot of people in the chat are probably going to be like, bro, 6'7, come on, man. I know you can make that thing 6'8. Go 6'9, please. Listen. I wanted to be smart about this. 6'7", 198 pounds to start off. A 7'4 wingspan, which is the max wingspan for a 6'7 build with a defined body type. Okay, the reason why I wanted to go defined is simply because you can get bumpy, but your extremities is still long. So you can still get them tip passes, catch them, them passes out of midair and stuff like that. And it works out that way. Now... This is where things get a little too tricky, all right? Now, I don't want to touch slashing yet at all. I want to go down to shooting. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Mike Wang and them, they got me thinking, man. They got me thinking, you know what? You might be able to be a problem with a 75 three-pointer because with a 85 three-pointer, I was hitting stuff from the hash. I was hitting from behind the hash, but... What I want to talk about is the mid-range game. The mid-range game is where it might be at. Like, I feel like now, now the mid-range game is where it's at. Everybody's going to be trying to hit these moving fades. They're going to try to post up. This is this this Mamba edition got everybody thinking they're going to be Kobe day one. That's what they came to do. So I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Passing and playmaking, like I told you guys. I'm there to lock things up. I'm not there to handle the ball. I'm not there to be the secondary ball handler. I'm not there to save you in a bind. I am there to lock up, okay? That's what I'm there for. And, and if you ain't there for me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm saying I, I might quit out on you. I'm just saying. Now, when I talk about locking stuff up, right? You already know, man. I gotta go, I gotta go crazy on the interior, bro. Got to go crazy on the interior. Perimeter defense. Listen, we we you know where we're going with it, bro. We going, we going, we going all the way to Hall of Fame clamps. Okay, now if everything goes my way, Clamp Breaker is dead. Clamp Breaker is dead. So now that I know that Clamp Breaker may be dead, <laughs> it's time to go ninety nine still. Yes, we going Hall of Fame everything in that third tier. We not playing no games. And also, didn't I tell y'all I had long arms? We're going with the eighty seven block. We're going with a build that got anchor. Menace, chase down artist, challenger, glove, interceptor, clip, everything you need. Oh, and um rebounding. Uh yeah, I'll put it so I can go ahead and get me rebound chaser. That's all that I need. Now, as far as the physicals go, I'm the type of person that is gonna believe in physicals this year simply because it 2K just keeps talking about them. Like 2K is talking about how we're gonna have physical takeovers and things of that nature. And, I, and I'm not scared at all. I'm not scared at all. I think I might like it. Now, as far as driving dunk goes, for whatever reason, 2K is saying that it's going to take skill to finish at the rim. Now, if it's going to take skill to finish at the rim, <laughs> I'm a very skillful person. I'm just going to go ahead and put that out there. Now, let me go ahead and put this up real fast. I believe that strength will matter. But what I could do is I could go 92 stamina just so I can keep up with them guards. I feel like there's no real difference between a 55 strength and a 57 strength. But I know that a 92 stamina is the next threshold after 90. So I'll go ahead and put all of my chips into that right there. Now, as far as my takeovers go, we all know this is not NBA 2K24 that you're watching. So I decided to go with enhanced jump shots as my takeover and paint intimidation as my secondary takeover. Now, I know for a fact that if there's a takeover in 2K24 that allows me to boost up my physicals, be stronger, be sturdy, be a problem on the block, be a problem at the perimeter, bumping my the person I'm defending, that's what I'm going to go for. But for now, these are the takeovers that I choose.
Now, I know that the Shades Of was a huge thing in NBA 2K23. And I can tell you right now, being Shades of Jimmy Butler and Kawhi Leonard is insane. I know it is. I know y'all like, hold on, how he get that build? Because, man, I do my homework. I make sure that I learn everything, min, max, what I need, what I don't need, and I put things together. Now, let's go ahead and uh, put this all the way up to 99 so I can show you the badges that I would use in 2K24. Now, of course, Limitless Takeoff is gone. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's gone. So I got to go ahead and, and put on that posterizer, man. You just, you just got to. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put on my Fearless Finisher because I feel like Fearless Finisher is really like the move, right? Now, remember... They said that layups, finishing at the rim, is really, really huge in 2K24. So I'm just trying to put in, put up what I need. Now, let me see. Let's go ahead and put this up. And I believe there's one more that I wanted. Oh, yeah, definitely. Aerial Wizard. I could put I could put that on silver. That's, that's valid. That's valid. So we got Acrobat and Giant Slayer, which means I'm going to want to do more around the rim. And I want to finish with flair. And I'll also have the other side to me that can catch lobs like crazy, as well as dunk on whoever is under the rim. Now, of course, we know that 2K gives out badge points in the beginning of the game, sometimes in like a my career set as uh, some type of reward. So I'm praying for those as well as badge points throughout each season to make this this mode of this build much more complete in 2K24. Now, as far as shooting goes. I'm not the best shot. <laughs> I'm really not. I'm not the best shot. But what I will do is I'll put on corner specialist. All right. I'll put on catch and shoot. All right. And I will put on Claymore. I know y'all probably like, bro, Claymore don't work, man. You tripping. Trust me. It, it works. It works. Okay. Another thing that I'm going to throw on <sighs> at MIDI Magician, man. One thing I can say about 2K24 is things should look different. Things should definitely look different. Now, I want to also make sure that, okay, yeah, that's five points. Great. All right. Now I got two more and you got to go with guard up. No, no, actually not guard up amped. You got to go with amped simply because I know that my bill will have pretty good stamina, but just in case I'm doing a fade or something like that, or I'm working in the post and I'm losing stamina or I've run out of all of my adrenaline bars because I did something stupid. Hopefully amped will help the fatigue factor so that my player can hit his shots. All right. Now let's talk about playmaking, man. I don't need nothing in playmaking, bro. I don't need nothing, bro. I'm a core that right. Right. <laughs> I'm a needle threader up. Right. 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 And I'm going to throw on Dahmer. That, that's all I need. Hold on. What, what else I need? You know what? I think that's not, no, no, break started. Just in case I grab a board, just in case I grab a board, that's all I need in playmaking. It's all about passing, passing out a shot and getting the ball to my teammates. Now, this is probably going to be the hardest tier to go through because if workhorse still exists, I definitely want that all hall of fame. Now, also, since I will be guarding ball, ankle braces is definitely needed. Anchor, you have to throw that on. And this is probably the, 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 the most exciting part of it. What badges do you go with in tier three? Because I only have 14 badge points left. That means I can choose maybe two gold badges here. So we already know right now, glove really isn't the best badge simply because 2K nerfed it into the ground. So I would go with gold interceptor and I would go with gold challenger. Now, of course you can go crazy with you know hall of fame challenger if you would like and then move clamps down to gold or you can say you know what my steel is so high i don't even need that but i know when these new core badge patterns come out and i have hall of fame challenger hall of fame clamps hall of fame glove and hall of fame interceptor available i know that i'm going to want to core two or maybe even three of those badges if 2k puts those in premium rewards of course so this is the setup that i would go with and I can alternate that because I do have badge loadouts. So another thing that I would do is, right? All right, clamps, let's go ahead and throw that on. And we got one badge point and that will be ankle braces. 
Now, if there's never loose ball situations where I don't tip the ball and I don't get steals and stuff like that, I can go heavy this way. Now, I could even take clamps off and even go workhorse crazy and go ankle braces crazy if I want to, but really you only need the ankle braces on silver this year. So this will probably be more of the set and I would definitely probably have off ball pest on to make the guard hate me. That's the biggest thing for me. I want to make sure that the guard dislikes everything that I do out there on the court. I want to make their day a living hell. So with that being said, you can really manipulate these bad setups any way that you want. But I know for sure with the more points you get from badge points throughout the seasons and, you know, inside of my career, if we have that for 2K24, this build can be a demon. I see this build having maybe 35 defensive badges. That's a pop. That's a real possibility. All right. So, hey, I hope that you guys take advantage. Make sure day one when you get NBA 2K24, get in that builder, bro. Just get in that builder because I promise you, you're going to need to learn about all the mechanics, all the animations, all the badges, what it takes, what it doesn't, min, max. I promise you by week two to three of 2K24 being out, we will have best build videos dropping on YouTube and they will be meta builds. Trust me. But with that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, first build of 2K24 for me is definitely going to be a lockdown. And I hope to enjoy making you guards lives hell out there. So with that being said, LockPod is signing out. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, Appa. King Kong, King Kong, King Kong, Appa. King Kong, King Kong.